everyone, Jane Applegath here, founder of the Epic Vision Zone, where we say life is too short to be quiet. Each show, we offer you an inspiring person or message to bring you closer to living your epic life now. Thank you for being here. You can listen to the audio version on your favorite app or watch it on YouTube and be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Mata Schoen wrote, your mind is a reservoir of potential, your heart an ocean of strength, your soul a well of talents, and your body a vessel of power. Brandy Gilmore is a research and mind-body healing expert who has been captivating audiences worldwide with her groundbreaking ability to demonstrate radical healing using the power of the mind. Using medical thermal imaging, she has been able to show visual proof of incredible healing results. Her results and case studies have been published in a prestigious medical journal, and she has also done an incredible TED Talk and featured in several documentaries. Brandy's eye-opening discoveries stemmed from her own debilitating injury. After an accident in 2003 left her disabled in excruciating pain and without hope for recovery, that is when she began her search for a cure. After years of exploring every avenue of healing, she discovered research that changed the course of her life with a complete recovery. In her new book, Master Your Mind and Energy to Heal Your Body, You Can Be Your Own Cure, Brandy shares the hidden research that is the key to her healing and teaches others how they too can realize life-changing miracles with her step-by-step, easy-to-follow roadmap to thrive with optimal health. Brandy's message, the reality is that our minds possess an extraordinary ability to heal far beyond the placebo, and Brandy's new book provides readers with the knowledge and the tools to access the hidden potential of our minds and our inner ability to live fully. Welcome, Brandy. It's so wonderful to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. And Jane, you are just a beautiful being, just inside and out. I'm just, I'm honored to be here with you, beautiful. Oh my, thank you so much. And likewise, I do, I have to say likewise, because I have been reading your book with so much excitement and eye-opening discoveries. So let's delve in to your journey. What inspired you to do the work that you do today? Give our audience an insight into uh, how your journey brought you to where you are today. Absolutely. You know, I have to say, this is literally the last thing I ever thought I would be doing. I used to work in technology, in telecommunications, doing network engineering and operations. And basically I had an accident and technically to a car accident and then I fall and I fell just wrong, just right, however you want to say it. But I literally went from living a full life to being wheelchair walker cane in extreme pain for more than six years. And, and my doctor said that there was nothing they could do to help me. And mm. basically what happened is I started really researching and when they said that there was nothing they could do, I started looking further and further outside of the box. I started looking for diet and supplements and everything that I could find. And yet still nothing was working. And so ultimately, as you, you know, what you do, you research and, and look for any cure that you could find. And basically I had been going to top hospitals and my doctors got me into this research study. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is it. Like I am going to get my life back. And I was so excited. I felt like a kid counting down the days of Christmas, you know, like till I got my life back. And so finally the study came and my friend, she took me to the hospital and wheeled me into this, the hospital and they started getting me prepped for this procedure. And I thought, you know, this is it. And the doctor, he came in and, and basically he looked at me and you could tell something was wrong. His his face was just off. And he looked at me and he said, you know, Miss Gilmore, um, you actually can't be a part of this study. We don't expect that it's going to work for you. And in that moment, I just I, I felt like I I swallowed a golf or tennis ball, really. I mean, it was just it was horrible. And I I found myself in a place thinking, you know, I just don't I don't want to live anymore. I can't live this way. And then I had this this thought after the study, you know, just was I, that I didn't want to live. But then this thought, their voice came into my mind that 
that said, well, what about the placebo? And, you know, it's a known fact that a certain percentage of people in a research study can get results from the placebo. And it sent me on this incredible journey of understanding how does the mind work to affect our physical body? Yes, absolutely. I've read from others that we are the placebo, but we're certainly going to dive into that. But thank you for sharing that, that incredible story. And I just want to remind everybody to be sure and check out the TED Talk. Um, because it is amazing and it takes you through her journey. So that being said about the placebo, when everyone told you that you wouldn't heal, what kept you going? I started to find anomalies. And so at first, you know, I was trying to focus on the power of belief and the placebo and it wasn't working. And, and so I started digging into even more research. Like, why isn't this working? I had worked for more than a year easily trying to just believe and force myself to believe. And, and so I would do it every, every day, forcing myself. And then I started to realize that there was something called the open label placebo, which is where exactly like it states the, that it's an open label. So both the doctor and the patient both know it's a fake pill and it still can get results. And that was mind blowing to me. And so the idea that it was all just belief behind the placebo made me realize that there was a lot more to it. And what kept me going is I found more and more anomalies. One of the things that was really pivotal for me was the awareness that people with multiple personalities, you know, multiple personality disorder, it's also called disassociative identity disorder. But when they're in different personalities, so to speak. So same body, but different personalities, they can have different ailments. They could have back pain in one personality, but then asthma and allergies in another personality. And what was also shocking was that the same personality always had the same ailment. Like the same personality could always have back pain while the other personality could have asthma or allergies. And there's even a well-known study of a woman who was blind in some of her personalities, but not other others. And, and it just really, all evidence kept pointing to the mind as holding the key to activate healing. And it was just incredible. And what also really got my attention was that it was things that were incurable, like asthma or allergies mm -hmm. or all kinds of things that were quote unquote incurable and yet right. weren't present in other personalities. And so it really just highlighted the power of the mind. Yes, I have read about that, even diabetes, even eye color, I have read that people can have different physical attributes in another personality. So it, it, is, amazing? At, it is amazing. It's mind blowing. <laughs> I mean, it, it is. Really is. It's a, that's a good, a good double meaning because it, it, it really is mind blowing the power of the mind. And you don't believe it till you, like you said, you, you, there are people that are, have physical attributes. They have this multiple um, uh, personality disorder, but they, they can change and yet they're the same body. So how are they doing that? And I feel with you that one of the things that kept you going, which is something that I have a passion for, is you were researching, you were learning, and that learning was something that you kept, you kept another piece of the puzzle and you said, okay, now I've got to go from here to there. And that kind of, you know, for, it, it leads you to encourage, not necessarily encouragement, but it's, it's the digging and the finding. It's like you're excavating for the gold and you're going to find it. You know, you're not yeah. going to stop yeah. till you find that gold. So exactly. beautiful. Thank you for, for sharing that because that gave you purpose. That's what it was. It gave you purpose. You said, I'm going to find the answer here. So, and, and being open-minded as you were, it just, it led you down that path. So you mentioned that there is misconceptions about healing the mind that keep people stuck or prevent them from getting results. Can you name some of those? Absolutely. Uh, you know, 
belief is one of those. So one of those we covered where a lot of times when people start looking at mind body healing, they think, well, it's all about belief, which is something that I thought was okay. Well, let me just believe that I'm already healed. And I was also doing things like, you know, meditating and theta state and going into a deep state of relaxation. Now it was, as I continued to research, there were epiphanies and awarenesses that kept me going. And when it came to deep relaxation or theta state, because I had been doing these for years, and there was this point during my injury where one of my friends, her aunt was dying and she was dying from lung cancer. And, and they asked me if I wanted to go pay my respects. And so my friend came and picked me up and, and took me over to her house. And as I was there and I was saying goodbye, something else really struck me. And it was this, is that she had been in and out of consciousness for a long period of time. So she, for, for quite a while, she was in this state. And as I looked at her, I thought to myself, wow, that's probably what I look like because I had been spending so many of my days listening to guided meditations and theta state and delta state and trying to stay in deep states of hypnosis and, and, and all of these things trying to heal. And I thought, well, if this is so healing, then why isn't she healing? She's been in this deep state of relaxation for quite a while now. And it made me realize that I really had to do something different. And so it just, I would say that. I would say that while meditations or theta state or different things like that, they, they can be helpful. And I would say it was a great, you know, for me personally, I could use them to decrease my pain. I They were definitely a coping mechanism for me. They definitely helped me to get through a, a period of time in life. And then I also started to realize that for me to get real results, I had to create a real change and go even beyond mm. that. And that was pivotal for me. And I mm. think that that's a misconception that a lot of people have is they're, they're, you know, just trying to get in that deep state of relaxation. I think it takes more than that. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yes. That was so observant of you. You have a very curious mind, which is the, the key to creativity, which is very interesting because you ask yourself questions and, the majority of people would not look at someone like that and put two and two together. But I find that fascinating. Um, I always notice what people say and it's like, yeah, she's really curious. Um, so that, that's a, that's a, that's a great attribute. I have to say. Well, Thank you. Yeah. You know, so go ahead. Prior, prior to my injury, I used to do, you know, when I did network engineering and operations, my entire goal was troubleshooting. So I would mm. fix things. And I had a four hour MTTR, which was a mean time to repair that, you know, if somebody's network went down, I had to get it up and get it fixed. And so, right. uh, so I was, I, I spent my life troubleshooting things and, and I was very good at it. And so when things didn't make sense, I kept asking why, but why? So mm. troubleshooting. And, and I think that that skill has helped me a lot. Absolutely. And in fact, you know, when we're children, we're always asking why. And eventually people say, well, stop asking why. But you know, no, don't stop asking why, <laughs> because that is a <laughs> gift. And we need to keep it when we're older, because that's what is we don't ask why. But yes, absolutely. You were, you were actually doing a job that was in alignment with your personality which was, it's fascinating that you, you know, you've coincided that with what you're doing today. So that being said, how can you utilize your mind to create a radical shift in your life? Give us some ideas. Now you've told us that, you know, to believe um, is, and, and to use concepts of meditation are wonderful tools, but you say there's a lot, there's more to this. So give us some ideas of what that entails. Yeah. Basically, what I started to realize is I simplified everything and I said, OK, if I'm going to actually implement this, what do I need to do? And I started looking at the awareness that different emotions affect the body differently. And very simply, if somebody's embarrassed, their face can turn red or panic attack, you know, anxiety, panic that affect or even sexual thought affects the body in a completely different way. Of course, different for men and women, but we can see that different emotions 
affect the body in a different way. Now, of course, as I was going through my injury and, and here I am in this horrible mess, I think, well, I need a lot more than just emotions. But then I also started to look at it objectively and say, well, how much can emotions really affect the physical body? And when I started looking at things like the widowhood effect, where a senior can lose a spouse and have a much higher rate of death, or even things like, you know, when somebody is so scared that their heart can skip a beat, that's their heart, or even scared to death, where somebody is so scared that their heart can stop and they can actually die. And so when I started taking emotions more seriously, which I, it was something that was a big shift for me in general, because I had grown up and even in technology working in corporate world, you know, leave your emotions at the door was a saying that I grew up with. And, and I grew up with the belief that, you know, in a, in a strong household where emotions are for weak people. So I didn't have any emotions, or at least I didn't know I had emotions. <laughs> and so, um, and so basically what I started looking at was that different emotions could affect the body differently. And I also looked at it objectively and said, okay, well, we know that stress affects the body, but let's be honest. There are people who are stressed, who have PTSD even, who aren't sick. Well, how does that work? Because it needed to make logical sense. And what I began to realize is that it's a different combination of emotions. And a simple way to, to say this is that, you know, if we picture somebody who wants to make cake, if they have flour, they can't make cake, but if they have flour and they mix it with eggs and butter and other ingredients, yada, yada, or vegan eggs and butter and other ingredients, yada, yada, uh, they can make cake. Now, of course, illness is much different than cake, but my point being is that different recipes make different, you know, different foods. And similarly, certain emotions in the mind can affect us in one way and certain emotions can affect us in another way. And so uh, this is the reason that, you know, if we look at people with multiple personality disorder, the way I see it is this is the reason that a person can have one illness when they're in one personality and then they change to a different personality and they have a completely different illness. It's not because they believed it would happen. It's because they have different combinations of emotions. And so what I would say to, to use this is to really understand specifically what emotions are affecting the body and then be willing to transform those. Mm. Yes, that okay. makes total sense. Especially when you understand that every emotion emits a vibration. And if you do believe that we are energy, which I completely believe that we are, and you do, then of course that's going to affect the body because your frequency, vibration, whatever you want to call it, is affecting the energy channels within your body. So yes, absolutely, that, make, that completely makes sense to me. So then what is the hidden gift to self-healing? Is it, I, I don't want to put I'm, words in your mouth, you tell me. We are energy and you know what's fascinating is this is that a lot of people think energy is just some type of spiritual notion or new age notion if you will but what's fascinating is that the man who realized then discovered in medical science that it's that our bodies actually emit photons or biophotons it was in 1923, his name is Alexander Gerswich, and he was nominated 11 times for a Nobel Prize and even won what's similar to the Nobel Prize for Russia. And so he had all of these awards and going beyond that, even to current day, there is literally research in the Smithsonian. So there's a database that is maintained by Harvard and the Smithsonian. It's a joint database under the NASA agreement where there is research on biophotons that is as new as last month. Now, my point in saying this is because so many people believe that energy isn't real from and that the body doesn't really emit energy. And so that what was fascinating to me is as I was researching mind-body healing, research has shown that there's a direct correlation between our thoughts and emotions and biophoton emissions. And by the way, to, to simplify this for the moment, for anybody who may not 
know what biophotons are, a simple way to think about it is like this, is that a light bulb emits particles of light, which are called photons, or the sun emits photons. And biophotons are basically little particles of light, invisible particles of light that come from a biological source. And so our bodies are emitting little biophotons, energy, all of the time. And what's incredible is that different illnesses have actually also been shown to be linked to different uh, patterns of energy, if you will. And so like, for example, somebody with diabetes has a different pattern of energy and is, and is distinct pattern of energy compared to somebody who doesn't. And so uh, it, it's incredible, all of these connections. And so I love that you, you brought up the topic of energy because it, it's so overlooked. Well, that information, Brandy, is so vital to what we're learning today in science. And if anyone doesn't believe that we are an energy source, just think of when they use infrared cameras. What they're picking up is our energy, our light source. So the room is dark, but you put on those cameras and what you're picking up is the light that's within us or the energy, the electricity, however you want to word it. But we have proof already we ju just um, that we are an energy source, but you're absolutely right. So that being the case then, what is the secret to, you know, we started out with the question there's, what's your secret to coming full circle? Um, and then we got into the energy because that's vital to the, to the secret. Yeah, it's realizing that our emotions really do impact us in so many more ways than we realize. And what's also fascinating is this, is that research suggests that these biophotons can actually communicate information throughout our body, including things like homeostasis. And if for a lot of people, the idea of a light energy communicating information throughout our bodies may sound impossible like you know how is light going to communicate information but when you stop and think about it even internet cell phone mm -hmm. it's connected through fiber optics and what fiber optics is is a glass tube with light going down communicating this information so that's what we use in tele telecommunication and so when we think about the awareness that we have light energy in our bodies that has been linked to illnesses and in even like cancer cells, cancer cells emit a different biophoton uh, frequency than non-cancer cells. And so not only that, but what's also profound is that this light energy, biophotons, research has shown that when biophotons that they have the influence to affect things like cell proliferation. Now, cell proliferation is very simply put when cells grow and divide. So it is a healing, you know, a wound healing. And it's, it's a way to easy, an easy way to picture this is if you think about something like dish soap. You know, if you pour water on dish soap, what does it do? It bubbles and expands and bubbles and expands. And so similarly, cell proliferation is when our cells grow and divide and grow and divide healing. And, and so the fact that this light energy can actually influence cellular proliferation, and by the way, yes, that's right, our thoughts and emotions actually can help influence and um, change this light energy. It's just, it's absolutely incredible. And so when we start to look at how to use this, you know, I could see as I was going through my research, all of the ways when I started to look at energy or biophotons and biochemical response inside the body and the impact of emotions, I started saying, wait, why? Well, I just want to get better. How do I use this? Now, what's profound is this, and this is a key piece to healing, is that if we take this awareness that our emotions affect our physical body, and then we take in another awareness that our brains work in patterns. And a simple way to say it is like this, is if we look at Freud's work, we can look at the awareness of patterns in psychoanalysis or psychology where we have patterned ways of thinking and feeling. And, and kind of a simple example, if we think about somebody might have a pattern of 
feeling guilty or a pattern of self-criticism or anger, or even if we look at other patterns, if we look at a pattern, maybe unfortunately, it's well known in psychology that a woman can have an abusive father and then leave him and find the abusive boyfriend, boss, dad, spouse, et cetera, et cetera. Like that pattern can continue. And so what we need to know about our minds is that our brains do work in patterns. And so what can happen is a lot of times people will try to just really stress, but they don't realize that there are deeper patterns going on in the subconscious mind that can fuel illness and problems and negativity. Now, when we look at patterns, we could look at it and we could call it repetition compulsion or reenactments or attachment theory or even law of attraction. You know, we can we, we see that everywhere or another term revictimization where somebody will go through a lot of victim experiences and then they manifest more and more and more of the same. And so point being is we can literally look all around us and see we have not only patterned ways of thinking and feeling, but also patterns of attracting. And earlier you had mentioned and you said, well, what is the gift in healing? And to me, that's exactly what it is, is, you know, even on a spiritual note, the way I see healing is this, is it's like a check engine light on a car. You know, a check engine light comes on in a car to tell you, hey, something is off, you need to fix it. And when we have an illness, it's an awareness that we have some type of negative emotional pattern that is going on in our subconscious mind that is then also attracting unwanted circumstances in our lives. And what I'll see people do is understand and, and identify these patterns. You know, what emotional pattern is going on? Is it guilt? Is it self-criticism? Is it shame? Is it what emotional pattern is going on at a deeper level? Let me identify and genuinely transform that. And when they do, they transform their health and their lives, what they're attracting and, and how they're feeling in life and their happiness. And so it's just, it's, it, there's a huge gift. It's just absolutely incredible. Mm. Yes, I could see that. Well, that being the case then, what was the pivotal moment in your own healing? Like you, you once you realize that, there, there was something in the subconscious. Like I, I've been reading your book and it, you said, so what could it be? Something in my subconscious is keeping me in this position or my healing hasn't begun. What was your pivotal moment and how did you come to that discovery? Well, I have to tell you, that answer is in chapter six. And so you'll have to wait till you get there. I'm just joking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, am just, I am just playing. Um, um, I need to know now. <laughs> <laughs> you're beautiful. I, I love having a sense of humor and being playful and, and yeah. uh, it's fun. And uh, basically what I started to realize is there were a few really important insights you know one of which was that i started initially i thought well if i don't have major negative emotions then i thought those were the ones that had to affect your health mm -hmm. and a, a really powerful insight for me was this is i started realizing subtle emotions and i thought well wait a second because i thought subtle emotions they can't matter and what i began to realize is if i had a subtle emotion two weeks ago and then again, last week, and then, oh, by the way, the other day and the other day, it could only mean one thing, that it's patterned way of thinking and feeling that is hidden in my subconscious mind. Mm. And that was profound for me. And it helped me to become more aware of what I was really feeling because I was very good at ignoring what I was feeling I better than I thought. Um, I, I, I was good at suppressing my emotions. And what I began to realize was that the events of 9-11 had hugely impacted me. And by the way, if you had asked me consciously if they impacted me, I would have said I wasn't there. Um, I, was, I was on the phone with somebody at the time, but I would have said I have so much compassion for people who went through that. And I would have said they, they didn't affect me, I just, feel sorry for everybody else. And, but they did. And I just didn't realize that that information had been stored in my subconscious mind. And kind of a, a long story short is this, is that 
I was on the phone with somebody in the trade towers when that happened. And, you know, she's, this, this person is saying, well, help me, help me, help me. And, um, and, and all I wanted to do was help. And then the phone went dead. And so that was, uh, one piece. And then after that, you know, when the trade towers went down, so did our network. Cause we have a, a lot of telecommunications right. equipment in those towers. And so then we have the phones, like every client, you know, every customer that we have, cause I, I worked on the business side, um, of, you know, I have major, very, very, very large customers, um, and major businesses and, you know, we're the backbone. And so everybody's calling in saying, what is going on? And, and, and so, um, and so I got to work and kind of set my emotions aside, but at the same time on all around me, there were TVs that were playing mm. the footage from 9-11 over and over and it was just being stored in my subconscious mind and I didn't even realize that was happening. Wow. So that that pattern had hardwired itself into your program, basically. And yeah, and this, this is what's really fascinating is all of the time you'll hear people who will say, okay, well, I have to clear up a trauma the interesting thing is, is I had that trauma, but the patterned way of thinking actually started in childhood. It was just, a, it was all part of a bigger pattern. And so we, we talked about earlier how there are misconceptions for healing. And I would say I did another misconception was I started looking just for a trauma to heal, but typically a trauma is part of a bigger pattern. And so had I just healed the trauma, that wouldn't have healed my body. I had to understand the pattern that was also part of that trauma. And so I would say that's another uh, pivotal insight for everybody. Right. So out of curiosity, did that come to you on your own or did you seek therapy or someone that helped you look into what might be triggering those? Because you had done so much research on your own, you know, you, you could probably you know, work on yourself. But I'm just curious for those who are, you know, interested in, in doing this work, um, the awareness of what that might be that's stuck within you. Uh, do you recommend people go to somebody that helps them see that? Because like you said, they, they'll bring up the trauma, but there's usually more behind that. I'm just curious. I mean, this is what I would genuinely say is first and foremost in my own situation i did do it myself and um and so that that was my situation and i was working on figuring all of this out so that was for me and i would say this i would say everything is true meaning that some people are empowered so and and feel like hey i've got this i'm gonna work on it on my own. And some people might then find things and they go, okay, well, I've gotten to a point, maybe some help would be good. And if that's the point, if that's where somebody is, then I definitely want somebody to get help. And also at the end of the day, I feel like if, if we looked around and everybody understood their own subconscious mind, understood their own mind programming, how to change it, how to transform it, how to be happy and healthy and heal themselves, that is the ultimate goal. And, and something I want to mention is it's even written in the Bible thousands of years ago. Mm. A merry heart is a medicine to the body. Ill thoughts will dry the bones. The point being is that even psychoneuroimmunology that showed that stress is a, that impacts the physical body has been around for 50 years. So my point is, wouldn't it be amazing if it was our generation, this time in our lives, when everybody really became empowered. So I would say all is true. And at the end of the day, my hope is of course, that every single person feels empowered in themselves. Mm. Yes, absolutely. And therein lies the power of knowledge because when we understand how these things work, it gives our mind the proof because often we don't believe. That's like, that's a key is the power of belief to help the power of belief, we empower ourselves with knowledge, which is what you do, what you did. You empowered yourself with the knowledge and then continued down the road. Absolutely, 100%. So you may have answered this question, but 
what is the key to getting tangible results with the mind body healing then is it this process that you just uncovered for us yeah i would say that the key is really identifying the specific emotions and making a, a, a radical change and even to this day i've been able to take people who are experiencing chronic pain and and um and under even under medical equipment so under medical thermal imaging what will happen is you know if, let's say somebody has neck pain and under medical imaging you can see on the scan their neck will show where it's all red and then i'll show somebody how to use their mind to shift their pain and start releasing their pain and basically what i'm doing is i help them identify the specific emotions and i help them to let them go to to really shift the way they're feeling and as i do you see the scan turn from red to green and their pain goes away and and it's incredible and of course they're the ones that's doing that i'm just showing them how to use their mind and it kind of a simple analogy is you know if if somebody was experiencing a panic attack and you worked on calming their mind and so the panic attack went away it's the the same concept but working with a different emotion and then identifying what that is and having them create that change and even th the other day i worked with a woman who had pain in her feet at a level seven and and huge she it had been there for years and years and years and years and i think seven years actually and literally in less than 15 minutes it was pretty much gone and she was like she was just like i'm astounded like i don't even know what to say i'm flabbergasted like how is this even possible and and it, it's again because we are truly amazing beings and so it's it's that it's identifying the specific emotions and creating that change mm. yes change the way you're feeling in a which sounds so simple i, and, but I have to, I have it to say ridiculous okay. but i get it, it. Does. <laughs> It, there's a woman that I worked with who had a tumor in her throat mm. and it was there for about four or five months and she had tried everything she could to get rid of it. And it, it was because she just, she tried diet and supplements and detoxes and all of the things and it wasn't working. And so she finally said, okay, well, I'm going to have surgery. I have to get rid of it. And she had a pre-op MRI. So an MRI right before her surgery. And it showed the tumor was there. It was five millimeters. You could see it protruding from her throat and her mm -hmm. surgery was scheduled then for Friday. Her and I connected on Thursday and we worked with her mind in this way. We're identifying the specific emotions. And afterwards, she couldn't find the tumor. And she showed up for surgery. I always tell people, still go see your, always see your doctors. Yeah. Keep, go see your doctors, blow, blow your doctor's minds. And so she went in and that her doctor was like, I've never seen anything like this in my 30 years of being an ENT. He's like, I, I can't operate on something that's no longer there. I don't know, <laughs> like, this is incredible. So at my point, I see the most incredible things. Wow, yeah, and, and, and very, very rapid results. This could work for everything. In fact, if you're overweight and you've always been overweight, that's interesting how do you feel about being overweight change that change that mantra change that recording you know mm -hmm. and all of a sudden things shift yeah it's it's amazing i do believe that all of this is is it's the power of our mind so yeah. that thank you for those incredible stories wow you're you'll have everybody at knocking at your front door <laughs> <I'll tell> you, <laughs> that's fantastic uh, absolutely. And this is how I look at it. And this is what I love is that as people learn how to do this, so my, ultimately, you're familiar with the four minute mile where Roger Bannister, like basically it was, it was always thought that human beings could not run a mile in under four minutes. And then finally, Roger Bannister was able to break that record. And then after he did it, people realized, hey, we can do this. And multiple people then were also able to run a mile in under four minutes. And that is what I see happening is the more people say, oh my gosh, we can actually heal ourselves. Oh, well, eh, let me implement this. And of course, I want to be honest when I say 
it takes real change because I've also seen people who have resistance. They, they're upset and they want to be upset at their partner or they're resentful mm-hmm. towards their parents and they want to be. And, and until they want to change, you can't make somebody change. But then when they do, I mean, I, I have seen people who have gone from being bedridden to running marathons, mini marathons and traveling. Like it's, it's absolutely incredible. And, and so uh, just to that point, yeah. and it's not because I'm so incredible. So uh, really, we are all such incredible beings. Right. In fact, you you just answered the question that I had here, which is people are stuck when it comes to self-healing. And why is that? And you just said it's because some people don't want to change. In fact, they are comfortable with their uncomfort. And that's what they resonate with. And that's familiar to them. And as we know, the reptilian brain does not like change that signals danger, but if they are comfortable with that uncomfortable feeling and they want to stay there, they'll never change, but the change is what will make them better. So did I get, is that correct? Like, would you like to add to that? That's what keep. Yeah. If I were going to add to that, I would even say that one, you're brilliant and you're beautiful and absolutely. And, (laughs) um, and also our minds can be really miswired and in, in a way that, for example, um, kind of an extreme example, we've heard before that somebody can be a cutter who can cut themselves mm. and cutting themselves, they can experience feelings of relief or euphoria or control or safety from cutting themselves. And so point being is we can get information linked up that doesn't even make sense. Or some people will have a pride and hardship. Now, if somebody has a pride and hardship, subconsciously, their mind wants more hardship, which then can also affect their health and, and, or somebody feels love connection to sympathy. And so the problem is, is if they feel a love connection to sympathy, well, then they also need to have a problem situation that then is also creating sympathy. So then part of their body may need an illness or Another thing that I've seen that's very counterintuitive as well is that if somebody has been ill for a long period of time, their subconscious mind, their self image can see themselves as being somebody who is injured or ill. And so it continues that problem. And so, so it can get linked up in the mind in a variety of different ways. Now, as far as disbelief, what I've liked to do, and I've taken people back to back who've done this all the time, people will say, I don't even believe it's possible. And this is what I tell people, you don't have to believe. It's kind of like this. If somebody experiences extreme anxiety, they can have a panic attack, whether they believe it or not. Or if they're embarrassed, their face can turn red, whether they believe it or not. Or people with multiple personality disorder, you know, when they're in different personalities, their body temperature can change, their blood pressure, their heart rate, their illness. It's not because they're believing these things, it's because they're having a radical shift in their mindset. And so all the time I'll take people and say, they say, oh, this is this is impossible. I'm like, okay, well, let's do it. <laughs> and, you know, I love for people to be able to see what we're capable of. Right, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's amazing and you're right. It has to be the willingness to uh, receive because if they're not in that receptive mode, it it's like you said, it's like hitting your head on with a hammer. I mean, it's just not, you, you can't shift that. That's a mindset in itself. And if they've got a wall, then they have to bring down the wall for, you, for them to receive the shift. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely to- totally what it is. Emotion control consciousness. What is this and why is it important for healing? You may have answered this, but th- this might be the clinical term, emotion control consciousness. Tell us what that's all about. Absolutely. So there's key distinctions to being able to get results and to get real results with healing, you have to make a real shift. It has to be genuine. 
Now, when we start to realize that our emotions control our consciousness or emotion controlled perception is also what I call it, is that a, a simple way to, to really illustrate it is like this, is, you know, we've all been to that place, you know, if you've been in love, and you automatically, what do you see in a person? All of the good things, right? You see all of the good, wonderful things. Now, if you've ever been frustrated or resentful or angry at a person, what does your mind want to do? Automatically fault find, see all the problems or go back to the argument. Even when you tell yourself, okay, I'm just not going to go there. Your mind automatically wants to go there. And so in either case, the mind does this automatically. It's not like you fall in love and you say, okay, well, mind, only see the good things. Or, hey, mind, only see the bad things in this person. The brain does this automatically. And not only that, but if we're in fear, then what does the mind see? Everything we're fearful of. And so what I began to realize for healing is that it wasn't just getting rid of a trauma because that doesn't necessarily create a huge pivot and a huge shift. And so instead to shift to healing, you really have to shift your consciousness, your perception. Because when you do and you create that shift, then your brain does it automatically. And then you can remain in a state of healing. So it's really about creating a radical shift. So if somebody's in a place of feeling resentful and angry and upset and their mind's automatically going there, then creating that shift to feeling love and happiness and optimism. Now, I do want to say for a moment, because all the time people, uh, you know, one of the questions that I had on my injury is I thought, well, you know, as I was going through the research, I thought, well, but there are people who are happy who still have health issues. What is that about? Mm -hmm. And what I began to realize is that some people might have patterns of guilt going in in their subconscious mind, guilt for being happy or feeling like they don't deserve a better life or a good life or underlying shame. And so again, these underlying subtle emotions can definitely impact us, but that creating that shift. So the mind automatically thinks in a different way is pivotal for getting real results. And so that's what emotion controlled consciousness is, is, is creating that shift so that your mind is automatically thinking and feeling in a different way. Right. And like I always say, life is a practice. So we practice and practice and practice because we, it is, it's, it's a practice. We learn something, we practice. I'm, I'm also a, a, a yoga instructor. Uh, and it's always about, for me, it was always about the practice. It's not about perfection. It's about the practice. And okay. I say the same thing with our mind. Yeah, it is. And, and creating that change. I have to tell you, when I was getting better, so I was working on, uh, you know, as I'm healing myself and, and I'm getting rid of my cane and all of that. And you saw the picture of me working out, like the muscles and oh, all yeah. of that. As I was getting better, I thought, well... I'm going to do yoga. That's really easy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not as easy as. <laughs> so, and it was perfect. It, 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 it was. So I just have to say to your point, I love that you teach yoga. That's beautiful. And yeah. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It, there are different for, forms of it. I mean, you would love restoration yoga. So we just lie down with a blanket and bolsters and shift our position every 15 minutes. That was the first class I took my husband to and he fell asleep. <laughs> he said, I like this. <laughs> it was rad. He's like, but that's I did the get him up. <laughs> right. I, I did get him into class doing the poses. So that, that was, but that was the first step. I said, no, you don't have to do any stretching. You know, it's just, just lying there, but we did have to do some stretching at the beginning. And he was like, you lied to me. <laughs> I said, no, just wait, wait for the good stuff. Do you tell him though the stretching is good for you? Do that. Yeah. Oh, he does it now. We, we we're really into the stretching, but anyway, it's just funny because yeah, yoga doesn't have to be difficult. That's a mis misnomer, but anyway. No, it, does, it they, doesn't. You're, you're right. It can be every level. There can be the easiest yeah. level of yoga and there can be actually one that work that you get a good workout from. I was, oh, I, yeah. and everywhere in between, I, I was impressed. Absolutely. Well, yeah, thank you. Um, it, it's my go-to. So why then is it necessary to go beyond belief and visualization 
to achieve healing. This is really in my wheelhouse, the power of visualization. I, I, I love that. I love it. I love it. And uh, I guess the easiest way to think about it is like this, is that all of the time I'll see people, let's say there's somebody who's wanting to create a new relationship and I'll see maybe a woman who's saying, okay, well, I want to visualize having a partner and being in a relationship. And what happens is that she'll picture it and picture it, but she's not really changing. And you'll see people say, it's kind of like saying, oh, I want the universe to deliver this. But maybe she has a pattern deep inside of feeling unloved or rejected or abandoned or hurt or whatever that is, or like a relationship isn't safe or whatnot. And so at the same time, there's all of these real emotions that are going on on a subconscious level. And so it's kind of like just trying to put a happy picture on top, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Visualize, visualization is important. I mean, we must get new information in our minds. So it absolutely is important. And we also need to make sure to be real with what's real. You know, what is going on in our subconscious mind at a deeper level and genuinely transforming that. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Goes full circle right to the feeling. If you're visualizing it, how does it feel? First and foremost, it's the, it's the same in the stories we tell ourselves. It's the same in the manifestation. It's, it's not about the wish, the wishing and the wanting. It's about the feeling. You have to actually feel what it's like to be there. Feel like you were disabled feel like you're walking again, like you're actually there. You've, you're, you're walking without your cane um, because that's actually placing you in that, in that space. And it's making a connection in your mind to that destiny. Yeah, Ye absolutely. Yeah. And then also, and then the mo emotional pattern is also right. But, and going, okay, well, what emotional pattern now from, 9-11, the events of 9-11. So I had both a feeling of expecting to die and also mm. wanting to die to save others that was stuck in my nervous system. So it's kind of like if if part of your brain wants to jump off of a cliff and the other part of your brain is like, oh my God, this is scary. Don't jump off a cliff. Uh, it, it's like my brain was triggering itself, that it was creating mm. a, a lot of fear in my nervous system that uh, you know, and, and meanwhile, I didn't even know I had emotions going on. I was like, what? I don't have emotions. What do you mean? <laughs> if you have fear, you're supposed to be fearful. I'm not. But this was all going on at a deeper level. Wow. Yeah, that must have been quite the aha moment. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah, that's um, amazing. It, yeah, it was it was Go more ahead. like, well, could this be affecting me? I don't know. I'll try it. And then as I started developing release techniques, I was like, Oh, well, I feel better. I, I, I didn't realize that I didn't that I didn't feel emotionally great until I started shifting. And then and then I started realizing that I the world, this is gonna sound like woo 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 or impossible or whatnot, but it was like everything seemed brighter and happier and mm -hmm. sunnier and and you know, um it, it actually reminded me there's like the, there's a a song i want to say it's from the 90s and i forget who sings it uh but it was like this song that you know my world turned black there's some type of or my world turned dark it's in some lyrics of some song <laughs> but all of a sudden that came to my mind and i was like i didn't even realize that my perception of the world was fearful until it changed and everything became more harmonious i thought it mm. just was if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes total sense. Absolutely. Now, that's incredible insight. And like you said, you didn't even realize you questioned even that, but then you saw yourself feeling lighter and seeing things in a different light. Mm -hmm. uh, how interesting light, the, the word light. Right. Um, yeah, it's the light within us that needs to shine in order to come fully into ourselves. Uh, that's definitely yeah and, and that i can has see so much that. pardon you do you glow you glow beautiful oh so. <laughs> well thank you, you do. no but it it's it's just it, it really is it's 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 like when they say an individual has magnetism they have that not necessarily because they're big and loud speaking or whatever but they can be very 
subtle and quiet, but they draw people to them. And I think it's innately, we are drawn to the light, but we don't call it that. You know, a magnetism is an energy. They're magnetic. Mm -hmm. And, and it's got, to, it's, it's the frequency. We, up, we align our frequencies with those people that speak to us because we see the light in them and vice versa. So yeah, yeah. it's, it, it gives a, a whole new meaning to that, that phrase, you know, you are the light. Yeah, because that's very spiritual too. But um, as we're learning in science, it's all true. We just needed our, our cognitive brains to understand it first, because we are not as spiritual as the ancients were. <laughs> but they got it, they just put it in different words, for sure. It would have saved us a whole bunch of time if we were more open. <laughs> but needless <laughs> to say, here we are. Um, so you said a little thing about um, interactive exercises. Uh, you've got the DS mind test. This is a very insightful and interactive exercise. Can you explain a little bit about that for us? Absolutely. And before I do, I'm going to warn you, it is absolutely ridiculous. It is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, good. And... I love ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's also profound. Uh, and so, okay. but first, when you hear it, you're going to say, wow, Brandy, that's very ridiculous. And then you'll say, wow, that is profound. You'll have a sense of clarity. To me, by the way, the biggest, the most valuable thing that I had going through my injury was clarity. The more I had clarity of what I needed to do and change, and the more I had that, the easier it was to just get real results, which is all I wanted. And so uh, that said, um, the mind test, here we go. Uh, so, uh, so what I wanna invite you to do uh, is I wanna invite you to close your eyes and we're just gonna do a quick visualization. And so I wanna invite you to close your eyes. And of course, if you're driving, don't close your eyes, but uh, assuming you're in a safe place, I wanna invite you to close your eyes. And I wanna invite you to just for a moment, picture that somebody you love, picture somebody you love is making you your favorite meal ever. They're making you your favorite meal. And I want you to notice how that feels to you. How that feels to you. How that feels. And I'm gonna ask you to breathe and take that in, how it feels. And, and then I'm gonna ask you just for a moment to come completely out of that vision. Just completely set that aside. And that's a great thought and set it aside. And we're gonna skip to a completely different vision something completely different. And I'm gonna ask you to breathe in a completely different vision. And I'm gonna ask you to picture that you have a silver spoon. And you have a silver spoon and you take a big scoop of slimy worms and you take it towards your mouth to eat it. And I want you to notice what emotion comes up for you. <laughs> and I'm gonna ask you to just for a moment breathe. <laughs> Okay, now notice what emotion comes up. Now, again, I warned you it was ridiculous, but also very insightful. So stick with me for a moment. Okay, so first and foremost, clear, 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 delete, delete, delete. Now, there's a few things you want to note. First and foremost, the feeling of disgusted could come up. And if we keep going into it, if we keep going into that vision, a person could feel like they want to gag from an imagined emotion that didn't even occur. Number one. So we can see how an emotion can affect our physical body and it can be purely imagined with nothing else going on. And that can affect our body and our physical body. Now, there's another one that is even more profound, and it's this. It's that this programming is programmed into us because our ancestors may have loved worms. They have been happy to eat and some cultures. So this is programming that we have. Now I could meditate for another 10, 20, 30, 50 years, and that programming is not gonna go away unless I target and reprogram it. And so something that was pivotal to me is when I started realizing I had been meditating and relaxing and visualizing and 
binaural row beats and phantom phase frequency and doing all of these things. And what I wasn't doing was then addressing the specific programming that I needed to identify and address and transform it. And mm -hmm. so we can see that even this from a childhood and that nobody has even thought about, I, I can pretty much almost guarantee that nobody came here today thinking, hey, I wonder what worms, like I, I'm going to program in that they're gross, that we probably haven't thought about eating worms for a long period of time. So this is something from childhood. And that's the very thing is that we can have emotions that trigger beliefs or hurts or wounding or whatnot. They can go back to childhood and impact our physical bodies in a way that we don't realize is even occurring. And that to get radical results, we identify what is being triggered, why is it being triggered, and delete that pattern. And that is as simple or as it may or may not sound to you, is how to really start getting radical results. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I absolutely. It was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. When you said the worms, I was. Like my face was like disgust. I was like, okay, we don't need to go any further. <laughs> delete, delete. But, yes. Right, right. But yeah, absolutely. You, you. It, it's like they say, it's a program. Um, and some are hard. They're hardwired, like you said. A lot of them since we're young. Uh, and it, it just depends on what they are and how deep they go. But absolutely, it's 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 shifting and changing and and practice. It's always the practice, right? Because we well, all have, we all, thing. go ahead. I mean, technically we want to take it even beyond practice. So one thing that I call it is I call it also your emotional reflexes. Mm -hmm. And meaning this is that to get real results, we have to have a new automatic way of thinking and feeling. And, and this is how you want to think about mm -hmm. it is that our breathing, we don't have to consciously think about breathing. We can, but we're breathing even if we're thinking about it or not, or our heart beating or our body temperature or digesting food, all of these things are happening subconsciously. And so our emotions that are also happening subconsciously, how a person feels, how a person maybe feels about themselves. And so a, a lot of times also what I see people doing is I see people accidentally reinforcing negative patterns when they work with their mind and they don't realize it's happening. And so I would say a few things. I would say um, that we have to create a new automatic way of thinking and feeling and that it's got to feel uh, incredible and that um, and that making sure that we're not reinforcing the patterns is also really important. Right. Yes, absolutely. Automatic. Yeah. Because that's that's where you you, you no longer have to think about how you're feeling but it's it's just comes up as automatic because those are the what i say is the universe just wants us to be happy i know it sounds so simple but the happiness it ignites your light the happiness changes your frequency the ha the joy i guess it would be joy even more than happiness it and and th that sounds so simple but are we in a state of joy every day probably not but we can remember and bring ourselves back so that we do experience joy um, and, you know, help ourselves, like you said, understand what emotion is coming up for us and then say, okay, I see you, I feel you, but no, you're not getting me today. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to feel joyful. And then, of course, I get silly <laughs> because that makes me happy. <laughs> so yeah, I like you. I love it. Yeah, I love humor. <laughs> so Right. Humor being yeah. ridiculous. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it's so funny. People will say all the time, they say, Brandy, uh, of course, you're so happy you healed. And I say, no, no. it's the other way around. Of course, I healed. I programmed because. myself for happiness. And so oh. I'd say it's easy to stay happy. I, I, I can have tears of joy for no reason and every reason. It's just because I, I went beyond. So kind of to, to this point, um, you know, when we work on reprogramming our minds for happiness, a lot of people, they just try to think positive. They go, oh, well, let mm -hmm. me think positive. But our brains work in patterns. 
And so that was something I started to look at and said, okay, well, if I'm going to start automatically doing this, I can't just think positive. I need to be programmed for automatic happiness. If, if our brains work in negative patterns and we automatically go into them, well, what about positive emotional patterning? And so that was something that I really started to do is said, and, and kind of a way to, to picture this is that if you picture a field of open grass mm. and you take a different path every day through the grass, you take a different, you walk a different way through the grass every day, you never create a path. And so it always becomes effortful and you have to think about where you're going. But if you walk the same way multiple times over and over and over again, you create a path and you no longer have to think about where you're going. You get on the path and you just automatically follow it and you could be doing whatever at the same time and the path is going to take you where you want to go. And so the same thing happens in our brains. We have neural pathways that whatever is programmed into our brain, it, our brain does automatically. And so instead of just thinking positive thoughts, I focused on creating positive patterning in my mindset. And that was a huge shift to making it easy to be happy because it's just programmed. It does it now automatically for me. And so I would say that was also something that was that was pivotal. So there was just key insights that created a huge change that that right. that made it work. Yeah. Yeah. There there's layers, but certainly all doable. All doable. Exactly. All yeah. doable. Worth it. Every, you know, that's what I always tell people is they say, you know, I would never want to go through my injury again. Mm. It was almost seven years. It was hard. It was painful. But I also wouldn't take it back if I could because of the way it changed my entire life. And so when you learn how to really master your mind, to change your life, your energy, when you really understand how to use your mind, uh, life changing life my life is better uh because of what i went through and and right. I, I wouldn't take it back yes yeah. absolutely amazing well i so appreciate you being here brandy and learning all this information i mean we could chat for hours i'm sure we could actually i adore you so much like we're going to have to get together and chat for sure i'd love you. to do oh well thank you <laughs> likewise oh my gosh yeah you're, you're my new bff <laughs> I mean, totally. And when I say beautiful, yes, you're physically beautiful. Just your beingness, your heart, you're, you're just a beautiful being. I mean, you know, from your heart, you're just, yeah. So absolutely. I could sit and talk to you for hours and thank you so much for having me here with you today. Oh my gosh. We're, we're so fortunate and we'll, 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 we'll do some more, but I have some other, one other question here for you. Tell our audience where they can find you at your book your podcast, uh, TEDx, and you have some free training on your website as well. I do have free training. So my website and uh, so my, where to start? Okay. So my book, uh, you can find it on Barnes and Noble, Amazon, anywhere books are sold. Um, you can find my book and my website is brandygilmore.com. And I do have a free training there that helps you to understand even more misconceptions about the mind and where people get stuck and what you want to do to change and and that's there and it's and you can also see what's really cool and i love this is you can see healing under medical equipment where you see people releasing their pain mm -hmm. and to me you know i love seeing results um and so that's another big thing as well and so you can find all of that there and uh and on my podcast that's what i do i show people how to release their own pain and it's it's uh it's incredible what we're all capable of yeah just incredible and we'll have all that information as well on the epic visions on bio pages so be sure to check that out and i have one question here for you if you could give the world a critical message one critical message what would it be it would be that we are all so much more amazing than we realize. And healing with the mind is writ literally written through thousands of years throughout history. And my hope is that everybody really starts to embrace this awareness that we are incredible, incredible beings. Mm, absolutely. And because we're here on the Epic Vision Zone, I have one final question. If your yeah. life were an epic story, what would the title be? And I feel like your life is an epic story. <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, the fact that I have a second chance at life 
um, is not lost on me. You know, spending seven, almost seven years, wheelchair, walker, cane, a mess, not knowing you're going to even get better and not, it, it's, it's that, that was a lot. And uh, my life is an epic story. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be here, to be out of pain, to be happy, healthy, and feeling fantastic in my body. And I think uh, that, um, so what would the story be? The story would be thank what you. What would the title thank be? You, title, thank you, universe. Um, here and now. The present moment mm, beautiful absolutely well thank you again brandy my gosh this has been incredible so much information and valuable insight into what we are capable of and thank you all for joining us here today and for information once again to connect with brandy go to the epic vision zone bio pages where you will find her social media and direct contact information and be sure to follow me on Instagram at Jane Applegath. And don't forget to connect with me at janeapplegath.com where you can access your free downloads, Creative Power and Vision Play Sheet. Sending you much love and gratitude. This is the Epic Vision Zone, transforming your dreams into epic success.